I'm Julie Pace, Washington Bureau Chief for the Associated Press, and this is Ground Game. The coronavirus pandemic ranks among one of the most consequential stories ever covered by the Associated Press in its 170-year history. Here to take you inside the outbreak is AP's Larry Lage. From the Associated Press, this is Ground Game Inside the Outbreak. I'm Larry Lage. Today is May 19th. Coronavirus cases have been rapidly increasing in several populous nations around the world. New cases have been spiking from India to South Africa to Mexico, while Russia and Brazil now sit only behind the United States in the number of reported infections. Russia has seen a steady rise of new infections and new hotspots are emerging all over the world. India's cases have surged past 100,000, and infections are rising in the home states of migrant workers who left cities and towns when they lost work. But there is new hope. After an experimental vaccine against the coronavirus yielded encouraging results in a small, early test. We're joined on today's show by AP Global Entertainment and Lifestyle Editor Nakesa Moody, who is an institution at the Associated Press. She started with the wire service in 1992 as an intern in Albany and has worked her way up to the top in the entertainment world with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're talking about how the pandemic is affecting so many parts of our lives and the entertainment world has often given people a way to divert their attention to reality and now it's just a reminder of it. Can you just start talking about how The entertainment world has been impacted by the pandemic in so many ways. It's just been so huge, you know, since um, March when it first really hit the United States. You saw Broadway shut down. You saw movie theaters close. You saw concerts come to a halt. You saw productions come to a halt. For example, Tom Hanks was filming a movie about Colonel Tom Parker and that movie had to be halted. And also Tom Hanks got sick with the coronavirus as well as his wife. And we've had major losses for, of people from the coronavirus, like John crying. This virus has touched every aspect of our lives and entertainment has certainly not been immune. The Tony Awards have been postponed already. Uh, do you think the Academy Awards in January happen as scheduled? Do you think we get back to reality in in any way, or is it impossible to predict where award shows like the Tonys and Emmys and Grammys and all those, where are we at with that? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, the Academy Awards, I think, are going to be held in March in 2021. Um, I think the governor of California has said that there will be no um, mass gatherings until 2021. Um, So that makes it interesting and kind of difficult. You don't know how this is going to shake out. I know that there have been some award shows. I believe it's the Kids' Choice Awards that did it virtually. Whether we'll have the Emmys in person or whether it be virtual, it's hard to say. I think what we've seen with the entertainment industry is that they have adapted very well as far as pivoting and making things virtual, creating different shows, creating different projects around this pandemic. And I'm sure that people are working nonstop to make sure that these things happen. I think that there were certain things that were happening that couldn't, that they couldn't adapt fast enough to change, you know, because the virus is, you know, it was kind of still new things like, like the Met Gala and can, you you know, um, we're still, we're still in the throes of it, but as things start to open back up, you know, it remains to be seen, but I think that there might be a light at the end of the tunnel, I should say. Concerts are obviously going to be impacted. Creating socially distant concert venues is a topic that venue operators are working on all over the world. I know entertainment writer Kristen Hall has a story coming up on The Wire. Tell us a little bit about what some music industry organizers are trying to do to stay in business safely. So what they're trying to do is have concerts 
but socially distant in the form of drive-ins. You know, drive-ins have gained popularity um, for films just because it's obviously a socially distant event. You can go and stay in your car with your family and you don't have to interact with anyone else or by yourself. So in that vein, um, like Keith Urban performed, I want to say last week for first responders and medical workers in a drive-in. We have some other concerts planned where it'll be a similar situation. They've done this in Europe and had some success. I mean, people really have a desire to go out and first of all, be social, but also see music. And, you know, you can listen to music in your home as much as you want, but to be able to see your favorite entertainer perform and ad lib and really connect, you know, people are really hungering for that. Kristen did a really nice story looking at how the concert industry is really trying to build that up in the absence of being able to pack 20,000 people into a stadium. What do you see as the future of movie theaters where packed venues with people eating popcorn and sharing popcorn even with their their family members, uh, how do movie theaters operate post-pandemic and pay their bills? I mean, that's one of the biggest questions of the entertainment industry because in some ways you're like, who's going to want to do that? But there are people who are really just yearning to go back to movie theaters. Our film writer, Jake Coyle, did a really interesting story about that. That communal experience is really important to a lot of people. Um, In the absence, I mean, we might see theaters pack less people in and have more time between screenings in order to clean and do a deep clean. But, you know, in Hollywood, for the, the blockbusters are used to um, making their money in part because they're packing people and they have like multiple screenings on multiple screens and you see so many people. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I think movie theaters are seeing how they can adapt. And I don't know, I don't think that they know yet. There's with so much of the country still shut down. It's something that I don't think that we'll be able to really kind of get a grasp on until movie theaters are given the green light to open up. And what are you hearing from sources in Hollywood in terms of production plans for movies and TVs? Uh, you mentioned earlier in our conversation about some production being halted. Do you see that resuming anytime soon? Well, I, Tyler Perry has said that he hopes to resume production at his Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta in a very careful way in July. And people are starting to think about how they can resume production, not the way they used to do it, because they couldn't do it the way they used to do it, but in a different way. I think that there have been um, some talk about doing things remotely. I mean, obviously there've been shows that have continued remotely. We have, you know, the talk shows. There was a show I believe called All Rise on CBS that did a show based around the pandemic, a legal drama, and they actually filmed remotely. And there have been remote reality shows. But I think Hollywood has created these task force to see how they can come back. Like, how do you come back and do a love scene? How do you come back and do um, and have people on set? How do you have craft services? You know, how do you, you know, there's so much involved because obviously you might, there's a scene that might involve two people, but there's maybe dozens and dozens of people on the set. So um, they're working really hard to kind of figure out what is the best forward. And how about the financial impact on the artists and actors that are trying to make a living entertaining us? You know, often there's the joke that someone's a starving artist, but that's not really a joke right now. Right. I mean, especially like on places like Broadway where, you know, you had whole productions just postponed or canceled, can't go forward especially on Broadway, people don't make the huge bucks, most of them that the stars do in Hollywood. But it's affected everyone. I mean, you have you have major entertainers who make their money with tours and they can't go on tour. Now, I'm not sure if they're having trouble paying their bills like some other rank and file employees might, but you know, it's still money that they can't make. I like Erica Badu has been creative. She's doing her concerts online and she's charging like a dollar or two and she's trying to create some re- a revenue stream. There's still deals being made though in Hollywood. You see every day that there's a deal for 
this upcoming project, that upcoming project. I mean, there's still a lot of optimism. I believe that, you know, this is a huge bump in the road, but we will get past that. I mean, I think there's, there's still faith that we're going to get through it and, and, and hopefully have some semblance of, of what we believe was normal. We're joined by AP Global Entertainment Lifestyle Editor, Nakesa Moody. And let's end on a lighter note. There have been some really entertaining, innovative ways that artists have brought their talents to us. Um, D-Nice has almost a nightly DJ set on Instagram that I've loved. There's a DJ in Detroit, DJ Truth, who has done a ton of Facebook Live shows. Um, You mentioned Erica Badu. I've seen her and heard her recently. I literally kept score during the babyface Teddy Riley Instagram battle. Share with us some of your favorite innovative ways that artists have uh, shared their talents with us during this pandemic. Well, I think the versus battles that you referenced, um, which in some ways are more of like a celebration, have been amazing. Like this past weekend, it was Erica Badu versus Jill Scott. And it was more, as again, like a celebration and listening to their great catalog. Some of the streaming sites like Spotify have put up playlists so you can go back and enjoy it again. So that's been really great. You know, you had John Krasinski, um, his some good news show that really uplifted. I think it went on a hiatus recently, but really uplifted people with some positivity. Miley Cyrus had a talk show. And I think that there've been really creative um, specials as well. You had the Disney sing-along which was really engaging and fun for families. Some of the telethons or some of the um, benefit events have been really interesting. You know, um, there's one from home, I believe from Global Citizen, but there, um, BET put on one that was really creative in the way that they presented it. It's been really interesting to me to see how Hollywood has responded because, you know, while so many other things have been had to just shut down, you've had... Other shows continue, like The Voice, American Idol just crowned someone virtually. And you have so much on social media and you have TikTok and so forth. It's really shown how the entertainment industry has really risen to the challenge and provided some really fantastic entertainment. And also, there's been a lot of nostalgia. There's been a lot of reunions from like The Goonies to, I believe, um, Parks and Recreation and other shows You've had movie networks put on a lot of nostalgia, a lot of movies that uplift. So I think that entertainment has been a solve in all this. It's been a way for people to escape some of the um, really grim news and really um, just sad times. That's what Hollywood has done and that's what entertainment has done for decades and decades and decades and continue and entertainment will be continue to be where the world culture goes to escape for decades you have shared your talents with the associated press please stay safe and stay well and best wishes thank you so much at apnews.com today's one good thing feature focuses on a new york woman collaborating with a new orleans jazz orchestra to put on a stimulus serenade to give moral support to frontline hospital workers and COVID-19 patients in New Orleans. She dreamed up the idea when she got her stimulus check, thinking she didn't need the money because she has a regular job that she's kept since the pandemic. She wanted to do something that would serve two causes. You can read that story and all of AP's coronavirus outbreak coverage at apnews.com. That's it for this episode of Ground Game. We'll be here every step of the way during this extraordinary moment in American politics and American life, giving you all the news you need to know. Be sure to tell a friend about us and please subscribe on Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Some of the details of our discussion may have changed by the time you hear this. For up-to-date developments on all of your news, head over to apnews.com. From the Westwood One Podcast Network. 